Hi everyone and welcome to the Deployment Research YouTube channel. My name is Johan and in this video you will learn how to speed up your OS deployment no matter it being MDT or Config Manager. And that means demo time. One of the first things to make sure of is that your deployment server or distribution point has enough resources to be able to serve content quickly enough to the client that you are deploying. And that means like CPU, disk, network, those components need to be, well, fast enough. What I usually recommend is to have at least eight gig of memory and four cores for the virtual machine that is acting as your server. So as an example over here, if I go to my Hyper-V host, this is one of my distribution point. You can see it has eight gig of memory and I have assigned four virtual CPUs to it or four virtual processors to it. And that is usually a good starting point for pretty much any type of deployment server. In terms of network speed, um, obviously a 10 gigabit NIC is preferred, even though you can get some decent deployment performance even with a single regular gigabit network card. But these days, 10 gigabit NICs and network equipment is not too stupidly expensive anymore. So most organizations will have that available in their data centers or even higher speeds than that. In terms of networking speed or verifying the networking speed, there are several tools available out there that you can use. One of my favorites is a good old tool, an open source tool called iPerf. And that means you can basically measure the network speed without being limited to things like storage. Um, and this is very useful. I was working with a company over in Europe a while ago they were complaining about slow deployments. And when we measured the network, that one had 300 megabit available to it. But when we were doing deployments, we saw only about 30. And it turned out that virtualization team actually had throttled the disks on their virtual platform. So it was the disk being slow, not the network being slow. And iPerf is a good tool that you can use to monitor the network part only. So let me show you. What I have here is one of my servers. This is DP number two. I have downloaded iPerf. And I have started it with the switch dash, dash S for being a server component. So right now, this server is in a listening mode. I also need to make sure that the firewall is open. I'm starting this on the default port 5201. So you need to make sure that that one has inbound uh, firewall port open for it. Or well, that port needs to be open in the firewall. Then if I go to one of my clients here, this is in a remote location. And I'm going to measure how quickly it is to get stuff downloaded from the server. So here's the command, specifying the server, specifying the port, and in this case, the dash R means download mode. I prefer call this reverse mode. So if I run this, and when I run this, I will learn that I have about 78 megabit per second available from this particular location. So in this scenario, I have a network where I have a remote distribution point and I have clients that are deploying in a different location. Obviously a little bit more than the 10 megabit that's shown in the picture here, but I think you get what I mean. In terms of measuring disk, I like to use a tool called disk speed. I have an example here. for a script to call it. So disk speed is a utility for Microsoft. And if I go over here, here's a PowerShell script that you can run to test it. Now, this test also does write tests for 
regular deployment speed, you don't do writes so much to the server. It's mostly read. So if you want, you can obviously commenting out the test that does the write test only. Uh, for example, this one here. You can skip those. But when you run this PowerShell script, it will spit out a result file for you. It's exporting that to whatever path you defi uh, defined. In my environment, I simply have a copy here. I can show you from a run I did earlier on this machine. So here is a result. And as you can see, this is a regular CSV file. So if I want, I can open up this one in Excel, get a little bit of better view of it. But you can see that the volumes that I'm using for most of my virtual machines and other deployment types um, has some pretty good um, read performance in terms of IOPS and also in terms of how much that this can handle in terms of a megabyte per second here. So a good way to make sure that your disks are performant enough as well. Now, if I go back here, obviously your network design will also affect on how, how quickly your deployments can go. In a scenario like this, where you have multiple networks, you have a distributed environment, some locations, it may sense to actually have a local deployment server or local distribution point. In other location, uh, you may not need to have so. Uh, because what you will learn uh, quite quickly is that you, if you don't mind embracing a little bit of peer-to-peer -peer technologies, uh, things like branch cache or peer cache, where you can have one client downloading the content and then share that to others. Not only will it be fantastically fast in scenarios like this, when you have a pretty weak WAN link between the clients and your server, you will also find that in scenarios like, like up here, uh, it will also, also offload your distribution point if it's local. Because technologies like Branch Cache, for example, they can pull content from multiple sources at the same time. And if you think of the network equipment on a local branch office, that equipment was designed to basically handle a lot of data. So in a scenario where you have, say, a local gigabit switch, and you have, in this case, I've just drawn four clients connected to it. So each of these clients will have their own, you know, gigabit network um, point to this one or gigabit speed to this one connected to a port. The beautiful point with the switch is that this client here can serve content on this client at full gigabit speed at the same time as this one here is serving content to another one in full gigabit speed. Because you will see that modern switches, they often have a backplane that is capable of way more than just a single gigabit. gigabit. They can often do 80 gigabit or 160 gigabit and stuff like that. Very powerful switches. And that, of course, speeds up your deployment. If you are doing unicast deployments, meaning clients from a single distribution point, there is going to be a limit when that distribution point or the network or both simply say, all right, I'm giving up. Uh, whereas if you have peering going on, you can have hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of clients doing deployment at the same time without destroying your network or destroying your distribution point or deployment server. Other techniques that you can involve is to make sure that you have found a strategy on how you deal with your images. Now, creating a thick image, meaning you take a Windows image, you install it, you install a bunch of applications, you run sysprep and capture it so you have a WIM file that includes both Windows and applications. From a pure performance point of view, that is going to be the fastest possible deployment you can do. But it's also going to be a not very flexible deployment because the more static components you add into an image, well, 
the less flexible you can be. Compare that to having a thin image and rather layer on the components that you want after the fact. So this is one of those lovely, it depends. For some organization, the only way to get deployment done quickly enough is still going to be to have a thick image. For example, I see that for educational organizations, having large labs that need to deploy classrooms, hundreds of applications, and the only way to get that deployed in a timely fashion is indeed to have a thick image. The same goes for um, developer stations where you have Visual Studio, a bunch of plugins. They can also be really, really large deployments or large images. But there are techniques that you can leverage to keep a thin image, but still being quite performant. And for that, you can focus on a few things. Obviously, the image is what it is, but you can focus on driver packages and applications and also making sure that your sequence runs in high performance mode. In the config manager case, if I would go to my config manager server here, or one of them, go to a sequence, like this one here, and right click into properties, Go to more options. This one is configured to run as a high performance power plan. What I have seen though, is that sometimes config manager misses this. So what I have taken a habit of doing is in my sequence itself, I'm making sure that I'm forcing that performance plan by simply running a run command line. MDT does not have a native options on the sequence, but you can add the same command to an MDT like that sequence if you're using that for deployment. In terms of content for the packages, here I have a bunch of driver packages. If I look at the content on one of them, and go to its data source. You see that this one has a single WIM file, a single compressed file. Inside of that WIM file, you have an almost three gigabyte of content, but this is where you will see the regular, you know, file structure, video, NIC, audio, etc. But from a performance point of view, it is way faster way faster to download a single WIM file compared to, say, a thousand small files. And applications is the same. My favorite example is this one here. Where I have a large application like 3D Studio Max, where the content is not really that big. The content is roughly four gigabyte in size, but has 18,000 files. Not very effective to download at all. And especially in scenarios over HTTPS, cloud imaging, on premises, whatever that is, it's not very quick at all. And don't let me, and don't start on, on peering because say that they have a thousand clients, each trying to peer almost 20,000 files to each other across the network. That is not effective at all. Instead, if you put that content in a WIM file, not only it's a single file, but it's also about a third of the size, much faster to deploy. So we see organizations that have started to do this as their standard method of deploying applications, putting their content in a WIM, and then they have a wrapper script that takes care of the installation. I have one example here I can show you. So this is a wrapper script that will mount the WIM file, install the application, and then dismount the WIM file. Super quick. And this is the fastest way that there will be to download that application down to the client. So what we're seeing in the industry is that overall organizations are moving to using thin images when they can. That's the industry trend. 
because that allows you to be very flexible at deployment time. And instead focusing on other techniques to make the deployment faster, like having these WIMD driver packages, WIMD applications, etc. That's all for now. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And other than that, have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching.